If you've got a couple of houseplants in your home that are not doing so well and you don't know why, then it's probably because you are making some of these eight beginner houseplant care mistakes to avoid. So carry on watching to find out what they are and how you can avoid making them. A classic beginner mistake to make that I'm often guilty of is buying a houseplant from a big box store or garden centre without any idea of where you're going to put that plant in your home. I think we've all fallen in love with a plant in a shop and bought it without really thinking about where we're going to put it or have any idea what the plant needs. Now this can spell trouble for your plant and it's a mistake that can result in an unhappy plant. Beginner plant owners often don't appreciate that some house plants are surprisingly sensitive things. They all have their own requirements with regards to light, temperature, humidity and if we place a plant in an area in our home where the plant doesn't get what it wants, it will get fussy and you'll start to see things like brown edges on the leaves or leaf drop. Diphenbacchias, for example, tend not to like long hours of exposure to direct sunlight. The leaves tend to burn and go crispy and brown. I found this out the hard way with some of my Diphenbacchias. Let me know in the comments if you've had this problem with your Diphenbacchia. Calafeas like high humidity and will develop brown tips on the leaves if they are placed on a south facing windowsill. My advice here then is to buy plants that are suitable for a space in your home rather than buying a plant and trying to find a spot for it that may not be suitable. Another beginner house plant care mistake to avoid is not checking the plant before buying it. This tip is so crucial and not enough people are doing it. Before taking a plant to the counter in the shop to purchase, it really pays off to give that plant a thorough check over. This is something I didn't really do before, but now I absolutely do before every single plant purchase. The first check that might be quite obvious is the foliage of the plants, but this does tell us so much about the overall health of the plant. Are any of the leaves yellowing? This can indicate things like a root bound plant or an overwatering problem. Are the stems stretched out with a large gap between the leaves? This can indicate a growth problem where the plant is searching for light and overextending its stems. Is there any spotting on the leaves? This can indicate a pest problem where little critters are sucking the sap from the leaves of the plant. Once you've checked over the foliage, you then want to go a little bit deeper and see if you can see any flies buzzing around the plant or fine webbing on the stems and leaves. This will indicate a fungus gnat and spider mite issue on the plant, so you'll want to avoid that plant so you don't spread the problem to your other house plants in your home. Let me know in the comments if you have unwittingly brought pests home from the garden center. If you're happy with the foliage and there doesn't seem to be any bugs present, then take the plant out of its pot and inspect the roots. If the plant is root bound, then simply choose another plant. You obviously want to be buying a plant that is in good condition. Also, is the soil of the plant saturated? If it is, then the shop staff are overwatering the plant so the roots could be rotting. I go into a lot more detail on this topic in my essential checks before buying a house plant video that you can check out after this. Repotting your plant as soon as you get it home from the nursery is another beginner house plant care mistake to avoid. It may be surprising to hear, but your plant will be going through an element of shock when we bring it home. It will have been settled in its home in the shop and it now needs to adjust to its new surroundings. The temperature, humidity and light will be different and if the plant doesn't like where you've put it, you can start to drop its leaves. Let me know in the comments if this has happened to your new plant when you've brought it home. So when you bring your plant home, choose a spot and leave it there to settle and avoid the temptation to change the pot. This will only stress the plant out further. It may be an unpopular opinion, but plants can survive being a little bit root bound for a little while. I had a root bound Monstera deliciosa in my bedroom for years that didn't have any issues apart from slower growth. So if you think your new plant is root bound, then don't worry, leave it in its nursery pot for a few months and then change it. Disturbing the roots of the plant when it's already going through some change will stress the plant out further. I say this lots of times in my videos, but watering is so, so important and it's something new plant owners really struggle with. When I was starting out on my indoor jungle journey, I really didn't have a clue about how to water my plants. It's why I lost so many plants in the beginning and perhaps while you were struggling with your plants, I tended to overwater them. Overwatering your plant is a real killer because it rots the roots. But what's overwatering? Overwatering means that the soil the plant lives in is constantly saturated with water. 
It's not allowed to dry out before being watered again. This constant moisture leads to root rot and eventual plant death. So what's the solution then? Well, simply to check the soil before watering by sticking your finger into the soil. If it feels moist at all, then leave it a few days and check again. Basically, you only want to water when the soil feels dry. Underwatering, on the other hand, is a little bit more forgiving because plants do normally bounce back from our neglect. But if you constantly allow your plant to droop and go yellow for a lack of water, then this will seriously damage the leaf tissue and roots of your plant. If you really struggle with knowing when to water your plants, then invest in a little moisture meter like the one I have. So this is a real game changer and makes caring for your plants so much easier. Insert the probe into the soil and only water when the probe reads dry. So I've got an Amazon link for the one I use in the description of this video. Once you start to get into houseplant care a bit more and are feeling a little bit more confident, you'll start to realize that plants need food just like me and you. But this is where people become stuck. Fertilizing your house plants is so important to give your plant the nutrients it needs to support its growth. But the problem is that people get a little bit too keen and fertilize much more than is needed. This will unfortunately lead to fertilizer root burn and long-term damage to the plant. Fertilizing too much will happen in three ways. Either fertilizing too often during the summer applying too big a dose or fertilizing during the winter when the plant doesn't need it. The solution is simple. Follow the manufacturing instructions on the packet for dosage and timing requirements and don't fertilize during the winter. If you're concerned that you may have been fertilizing your plant too much, then look out for yellowing leaves or leaf drop. If this is happening, then change the soil of the plant completely. Give the plant a good drink with just water and don't fertilize again that year and with patience, your plant should recover. I've already mentioned that house plants are sensitive souls. And one of the things they're sensitive about is temperature. Not considering temperature is a common house plant care mistake to avoid. Firstly, we want to avoid placing our plants near open doors or windows because the changes in temperature and humidity will stress the plant out. Plants like consistency, otherwise they drop leaves and develop brown tips on the leaves so keeping your plant in a stable spot away from drafts really pays off. Also, be mindful of your plants during hot weather. This may sound obvious, but your plants will dry out quicker during hot weather, so you will need to check if they need water more frequently. People tend to forget this when hot weather comes around. Make sure you also protect your plant against cold weather in the winter, especially if you're going away. Most of our indoor plants hail from the tropics and do not like long periods of cold. If you can set a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit in your home, then this will really benefit your plant. Also, please don't place your plants right next to a radiator or even above a radiator. This will really do no good for your plant because the air around the radiator will seriously lack humidity and most indoor plants love high humidity. I've mentioned this next mistake a few times on my channel because I think it's so important, but it's something that will actually slow down the growth of your plant and that is not pruning your plant. Surprisingly, pruning your plant encourages stronger, bushier growth. Beginners fear making cuts on the stems of the plants because they think they will kill that stem, but pruning the stem of your plant will not kill that stem. In fact, the opposite is true. In most cases, your plant will send out two new shoots on the part of the stem where you made the cut, and if you repeat this on your plant, you'll have a nice bushy plant in no time. Disease is also more likely to spread on a plant that is not pruned. This is because there will be a lack of air circulation in the plant due to the dense foliage. And this is an ideal environment for mold and fungal disease to spread throughout your plant. So keep the foliage of the plant pruned so air can circulate freely in and around your plant. You want to keep on top of removing decaying plant matter because this is where pests such as fungus gnats really thrive. Cut away dying leaves and remove dead leaves that have dropped off the plant onto the soil to remove the food source for pests to stop them getting a foothold on your plants. You also want to cut dying leaves off the plant to stop them stealing nutrients from the rest of the plant. If you have a few yellowing or brown leaves, then you may as well cut them off. They won't go green again, and this stops them stealing nutrients from the rest of the plant, and it also tidies up the appearance of the plant. Probably one of the most important plant care mistakes to avoid is taking on more than you can handle. There are some plants, such as calafeas or zebra plants, that need a lot of attention to keep them looking healthy in your home 
and are considered very fussy. So if you're a beginner plant carer, it's probably wise that you avoid these plants to avoid disappointment. I do have a video on 10 house plants beginners should avoid that you should check out after this video. Not choosing plants that are more forgiving is probably why so many plant parents lose their plants and get discouraged from collecting plants. They assume they did something wrong when in fact they unwittingly purchased a plant that is tricky to look after. One of the first plants I bought was a Tradescantia zebrina and it looked absolutely gorgeous for the first few months. But as with all Tradescantia zebrinas, its stems began to die back at the base of the plant. I was literally pulling my hair out for weeks about this, the result of which you can see before you, because I thought I was doing something wrong. I now know that this is fairly typical for this plant because of the way it grows in the wild. Check out my care video if you want to know more details and let me know in the comments if this is happening to your Tradescantia. To take your houseplant collection to the next level, you need to watch this video here where I talk about four great ways you can double your plant collection in one month for free.